Okay, so let's add the code we need for that lab. So we need to create two transactions and spray alternating enlistments. So this is creating transaction number three. So we're going to actually copy that for creating transaction number one and two. So we still need it for transaction number three. So we're going to create transaction number one and two. Okay. And then we need to spray alternating enlistments. So we can actually copy the codes that we're going to use for refilling enlistments. And So we actually need to feel to create an enlistment associated with transaction number one and say that into the set A. But we need to actually also spray into set B. Associated with transaction number two. So we have pushed the binary using uh, Visual Studio uh, to the actual target VM and we have attached WinBag on the target VM. So I'm going to run the binary and now we can see it created two sets of enlistments for the Feng Shui and so it's telling us to use the either the pull find command or the pull command. So because we haven't set any breakpoints, uh, we can't use the pull command because we don't know any address at the moment. So we're going to use the pull find command, but the pull find command is quite slow. And so we're going to use actually the cache command. And by default, the cache is quite small. And so the idea is we're going to increase the cache. It speeds up a little bit the pull find command. If we set it to this value, we can see that it's too large, so we can't use that. So we're going to use that value, which seems to be the largest value I can use on my machine to speed up. And then we're going to use the pull find command with the TMEN tag. So just to get an idea of how long it takes, I'm just going to start a watch. As you can see, the addresses are quite random at first and it's starting to look for all the different enlistments chunks on the non-page pool. A few moments later so we can see it finished searching in one of the region, one of the non-page pool, and it's actually searching in another one right now, but it doesn't find anyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break and stop the timer. And so if we look back, we can see uh, that there are some of them that are adjacent in a certain region and a lot of them are actually adjacent in a different region. So if we look at some of the ones that are actually allocated at the beginning of a, of a region, for instance, like this one, you the pull command. So here we can see that there are k enlistments adjacent to each other. So I get the question is, are they from different transactions, transaction 1, transaction 2, transaction 1, transaction 2? So first we need to figure out where the, if it is the enlistment, because we know there are a couple of headers, like the object headers and the pool header. So we need to find the offset. So if we just print the data, 
and we're looking into the B zero zero B. So it looks like it's here, ending with zero three. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's sixty hex. So if we actually print as an enlistment. So we're going to add 60. So we can see that it matches the cookie. The cookie is B00B003. And this, everything looks valid. So then the next thing we can see is that there is 250 hex between two chunks, you go from 420 to 670 and so on. So if we just add 250, it gives us another chunk with another valid key enlistment. So what we can do now is actually look at the transaction associated with each enlistment. So to do that, we can just um, add the field we want to print. So we want to print the transaction field. And we can do that for the different one. So we want to start from the 1D0. Right. So we're going to add. So we're going to do it for every canisment. So yeah, it's really interesting because as you can see, the transaction one and transaction two, and so we have actually managed to realize our goal, which is to have alternated enlistments from two different transactions. So now let's do the same, but this time we're gonna actually print the allocated enlistments over time. So, if we actually look at what is at this address, we can see it actually calls TMP initialize enlistment. And we remember it's actually passing the K enlistment pointer at the first argument. So we can actually use a breakpoint to log the allocated enlistment. So we're going to use the SXD SSC command and then the actual breakpoint. Okay, so now we're going to actually start our binary. And so we can see all the enlistments being printed. So we're going to set a, a timer. And you can see that initially all the enlistments being allocated are at random addresses. And it's because we haven't filled all the holes yet. Another thing to note is that it's quite slow at the beginning because it has to break on all these allocations. A few moments later. We got the idea. It's taking a long time. We're just going to break the debugger and just analyze. So if we look, for instance, at this region, You can see that actually the layout is not that great. So 
So if we go and look for our certain addresses, So I'm just going to disable the breakpoint. And just continue execution. So in order to improve our debugging session, we're going to add code to actually block at a certain time. So there are 1000 hex enlistments in total. So when we reach, for instance, C00, we're going to actually wait that we hit a key. And we're going to push that new binary onto the target VM. So now we're going to execute it. So we can see it hangs. So probably it reached the get character. Now we can re enable the breakpoints. So we break in here. So we can see our breakpoint was disabled, so we're going to enable it now. And now it's enabled. So we're going to continue execution. And we're going to hit a key. So it's going to continue print allocating the enlistments. So here we can see that there is a lot of adjacency. A lot more. So let's break and we're going to take one of them. And yeah, we get our alternating enlistments. So now we're going to add code to actually uh, create the holes. We know we have some adjacency in the k enlistments with the alternating allocations, but we want to free all the enlistments associated with transaction two. So we need to change the states for all of them. So we pre prepare them. Then we need to prepare them. Then we need to commit them. And finally, we need to close the handle that we have in username. So in order to free the enlistment, we need to pre-prepare, prepare, commit, and then close the handle. For now, we're going to comment draining the notification, just because we don't want to, we want to see if there is no interference, at least if the layout is correct without reading the notification. And the last thing I want to do is I just want to set some text here to make it more user friendly. Okay. So we're going to push the binary onto the target VM.
So now you can see that we have pushed the binary and we don't have any breakpoints enabled at the moment. So we're going to run the binary. It's telling us to enable the breakpoints. We're going to be breaking the debugger and enable breakpoint zero. It's enabled now, so we continue execution. Then we hit enter to continue execution. And now we can see it starts printing all our kernismans. So we have adjacency every two enlistments, which is pretty neat. I'm going to break in the debugger. He does let me break. OK. So I'm going to go, for instance, in this address. So we can see we have two, four kernismans. We go here. We have another four enlistments. So it's pretty good layout. So I'm just going to run it but actually disabling the breakpoints. Okay. So now we're gonna, we have spread everything. So we're gonna actually trigger the free of the enlistments. And now it's telling us we can break and check if we have created holes. So let's go back to the one we printed. So if we go check, we put that address 4060 and E060. Okay. Ah, neat. We have an allocated enlistment free chunk. Allocated enlistment free chunk. And if we go to the other one. Allocated instrument free chunk. Allocated instrument free chunk. Yeah, we did it. So I've just hit enter in order to continue execution after we've analyzed the holes being created. And so remember, there is code already to refill the holes with new kernismans. So indeed, after we created the holes here, it's actually refilling the holes with a, a new transaction, transaction number three and a new set. So now let's reanalyze in the debugger what we have. So we're going to analyze again the same addresses. So we can see here the holes haven't been replaced or on the other one. The holes haven't been replaced either. So it could be due to the fact that actually I paused for a long time and something else happened. So because the debugging session can change the layout because we stopped the debugger and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the get character. So it actually executes all in a row without any pause. So we want it to continue. So I'm just going to rebuild the binary. And I'm going to rerun it. OK, so it should have done everything. So now I'm just going to break in the debugger. 
And so here I don't have a choice. I need to use the pull find command. A few moments later. Okay, so I think we've got a, a good amount of chunks here. So I'm gonna stop it here. And just break in the debugger. So let's see what we have. If we take a, a given region, so for instance, I think this one. So the first thing we can notice is that we do have alternating canisments, which is what we want. But uh, the next thing we want to check is that we indeed have it into two alternating transactions. Yeah, it should have been this address. Okay, so now I have one valid. So if I print the transaction for this one, this transaction and then if I add plus 250. So here we can see they're actually all part of the same transaction. So we got something wrong or it's just a spray of all the previous enlistment that were allocated here. So if we do check our code, we can confirm the enlistment of transaction three, where the previous one, we're in transaction two and one, so that's good. So let's see what we have now. So we have holes. So we haven't been able to reallocate the enlistment chunks. So we see that even though we remove in the code all the pows, so everything is done very quickly, uh, we either uh, only see an instance from transaction one, uh, all adjacent, so without any holes, or, or we see the holes, but then we don't see them replaced by uh, the enlistment from transaction three. So it doesn't work really well. So the last thing I wanted to show is that uh, I've re-enabled the training the notifications and I wanted to see what was the impact, not only on the whole creation, but also on the uh, whole refilling. And so you can see all the get character have been commented out. So everything goes really fast. And then at the very end, I drain the notification and I actually, during the refilling, I actually have a, an if condition to uh, be able to uh, enable a breakpoint. So I'm actually able to see what are the addresses used for the creation of the enlistments when trying to refill the holes. And so the actual execution is here. We can see we drain notification and now we were uh, waiting for a breakpoint to be enabled. And I actually previously hit enter. And on the debugger, I broke and I enabled this breakpoint. And then we, th we see the trace of all the allocated enlistments. So this is for the whole refilling. And the first thing we, we can see is that actually it's using adjacent addresses and which is 
pretty bad because it means from a, a Feng Shui perspective, we didn't manage to refill the holes. It's just refilling a new region, which is not what we want. And so to confirm that, I, I, I use the pull command and try to print the different transaction for the one that have been reallocated, but we can see they're all the same transactions. So it's it's actually not filling the hole. Another region, we can see an announcement is in a totally different region. And again, here, another region, we see the all the key announcements are part of the same transaction. So, so to summarize, uh, it's this Feng Shui method is not working very well. And in this scenario, I haven't been able to show you the actual notifications being on the way, but what we can see anyway is that the entry doesn't work with key announcements. Okay, thank you for watching.